Uh, surprise! I didn't want a surprise. Well, I've got a surprise. Hmm. Well, this is surgery, actually. Um, uh, supplemental. Surgery, supplemental. Um, right. Um, in answer to the perennial question, what now? Um, I... I recall, as I was taking the paint off, that the this was a bit of a mess here, but it was all still under paint, um, and the rubber rail was still on. Um, so, in order to not get caught out at the end with things I wasn't expecting, um, I have taken off the rubber rail just for this section. So we can look at what that's like. This is pretty stiff. This is well joined together the fixings for the rub rail there there and the fixings for the hull to deck joint here and here and here uh, so this is this 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 oh uh, that's weak and separated that is weak and separated that is weak and separated and then this is back to firm again so we've got a problem with the halter deck joint between here and here um, from this side we can see a change in color there so i've just taken this back with a uh, sander cleaned it taken it back with a sander and a dremel on the other side because this is it looks a bit innocuous from here um, if I look on the other side, um, so what has happened, so this is a piece of wood here, between here and here. It's a piece of wood filling it in, and what has happened is some sort of impact has occurred on the deck rail. Um, this is all part of the foam, this is all a shaped and with foam core, the deck run through. Um, but you can see here it's been smashed, uh, this is missing this whole bit. Um, and the, uh, the, the smash goes all the way to here, so I've dug it out with a Dremel. So, we've got a... Problem. It'll be all right, but yeah, this is going to need some work. Um, what to do about it? What to do? Well, you know, in practical terms, we need to just make it firm. Um, so, put whatever is required behind it. I don't think we're going to, I think we'll have to use this as a basis. For the repair works so we might get a bit of a lump here eventually but that will be covered with the new rub rail it's to make it good this important not to make it fancy as we have discussed problem right well we're going to go back to school here nothing for it this is a next level um this is a next level epoxy repair um so Let's have a look at what we've got there. I thought about this and let's have a look what we've got. So we've discussed the the moulding situation in that we've got uh, a hull moulding and a deck moulding. And the hull was made this way up from the inside <coughs> and that the deck was made the other way up so it makes more sense to think of it the other way up and let's think about the very edge of where we're looking which is the deck rail of the side deck so the original form of the mold
is by my reckoning like this uh, so this is the side of the coach roof uh, with the windows in it's upside down um, and the very particular profile is been this way up the first operation to make the deck was to lay in um, a layer of fiberglass and then on top of that was filled these spaces from above with a type of foam I'm not sure what type of foam, probably some sort of PVC or something, I don't know. But it was poured in place. You can see the surface of the roof from inside is a bit undulating because the foam has just been poured in and it has gone a bit lumpy and as it has foamed. And then covering over this, then another layer of fiberglass and there's another layer of fiberglass to form a coach roof so these foam parts are encapsulated within the fiberglass and this is how the deck is made the decks are foam filled and it is by them being thicker that they become stiffer without having to use a lot more fiberglass material because the foam it's the thickness which gives it the strength so let's think about that the other way up and to see what we're looking at. So the hull, well I've said it now so I'll draw it. The hull edge, um, I could have three colours really but there you are. Um, the hull edge and has then The deck in over the top of it. These really are the wrong colours. I'm afraid we're going to have to go with green foam now. Right. The deck rail is foam filled. The decks, the side decks are foam filled, and the coach roof is foam filled. Then what we look at from underneath the boat underneath the deck is then that glass fibre surface and then at the joint there's another fibreglass tape which is applied like that there you are so that's how it actually is um, now the damage that we've got has actually completely smashed the deck rail off. I've now cut this edge off because it was just ruined and cracked and broken. Um, so what we're looking at, we're going to have a look at this. Is the frail, so is the top of the hull and then is the edge of the encapsulation of this foam on the um, uh, on the quarter deck, no, side deck, and then the scabby, dirty top of this applied ribbon on the inside. Um, recall that. So, what we need to do, I think, is right. I get another colour. Here we are, blue. So the repair work, what we're going to actually have to do is take the tape off and reinstate the way that the side deck joins across the top of the hull. So lay some new glass in here and then some, lay some new glass across the top, then use some foam, which I've got some of, and it is green. 
so it is appropriate that I draw it on in green then to uh, re-establish the line of the deck rail blue and then a final piece of glass over the top making the deck hull joint back to where it was and then finish it inside by replacing the tape around and then we'll be done and then replace the fixing through and that's a proper repair that's not just patching it up that's um, making it back to being strong again so let's have a look I'll bring a pen to point I really did think I was done with grinding but one never knows what's going to happen next right so let's have a look so here we are here's the edge of that foam sandwich so this is the top skin and the bottom skin comes up from underneath it and if you look there it's very clearly indeed so the top skin here the bottom skin and you can see the edge of the foam as it points out and these skins together run across underneath the, uh, the foam of the uh, deck rail um, and then there's another layer of glass that runs over the top and joins them all together. And then this is just the, the remnant of this piece of dirty glass which joins over inside, which actually is bonded to the top of the hull. This is the top of the hull here, as we can see. Uh, it's this colour. It's this colour. I've been trying to find out what colour she was. I don't know, maybe she was ten different shades of blue, but this very very light blue seems to be the one uh, right so the preparation for this is going to be because you've got several elements to to build and we're missing more of this central section is to clean this out so there's an edge here so clean this out so there's an edge um, pull these sides back so we've got a good piece of foam to join our new foam to. Cut the foam off but leave the the under part so we've got something to wrap our new glass over. Um, and same here. So cut that back. As you see inside the damage is much more significant on this side. Um, so maybe we'll take that back to there to be completely sure. Take that back to there to be completely sure. Um, flat that, flat that, and this will be a hole. So then we'll post some glass fibre out from underneath and stick it on underneath and post it through and then bring it over uh, to make a continuous piece and then apply a new piece of foam and then come over the top with it. So this is much more advanced than any of the stuff that I've done before, but that's good. Um, yeah, it's good experience, I suppose. Uh, so, huh. grinding! Again! <laughs> Shit. That's my friend Justin. Uh, right, we're doing this thing. So we're not doing this... Uh, we're not going to do this today. We're just in the middle of doing the holes. So you see the first job... I've exposed the razor edge of a foam capsule ready to put the glass on but there are all manner of little holes all across the top so to be able to put the glass on the holes need to be filled so we'll do that first and we'll do that all on the deck on this side like we did on the other side because I didn't do it already yeah, I, right and it's quite late in the day so I'm going to get the heat lamp on and uh, get on with that with uh, ably assisted <laughs> by my uh, handsome uh, Looks like a, um, some sort of surgical assistant, but uh, that's for the dust. Uh, jolly good. Well, here he is, absolute stalwart. Just keeping it all warm. Very nice. Um, right, so you can see that. I've just filled that edge in with the colloidal silica mix. 
And it's all quite smooth now and all the holes are filled. So that'll be, I think it'll be a four day epoxy job. It's so complicated to do, maybe, don't know. Try again tomorrow. Why did the clocks go forward? There's nothing wrong with the clocks. Leave the clocks alone. Um, good. 31st of uh, March. Problem. Here we are. Not a problem. It's fine. It's going well. But this is the resolution of the problem. Right. Um, got the heat lamp inside. Um, I've put a shiny uh, laminate underneath the outside. Underneath the existing uh, edge. So that we can maintain the deck as a separate item from the hull. So we can pull that board out after we've put these layers on. Um, and I've slightly bent and now waxed this aluminium tube. And from underneath I can shove it up just to form the shape of the edge. So I can work inside and post the glass fibre out stick it on underneath, clamp it with the um, tube and then be on the outside and wet it out and stick it down. This is primed onto a waxed surface um, so it should come away quite easily uh, but it should also be sticky um, for the glass fibre when it comes outside. Uh, hope it goes okay. Hmm. Lovely. Right. Well, we're slightly blowing apart here, actually, but uh, weather's changing for the slightly stormier, I think. Um, there you are. Uh, so I did, I bought the, I posted the sheets, I stuck them underneath, I applied the tube, and stuck down, so it's a bit floppy, a bit stiff, uh, stuck the under layers, stuck them down. Actually looking at it is um, I wanted to carry straight on and put the top layer on. So what we've done is we've sandwiched the foam core part of the deck and remade that into an edge equivalent to the underneath of the foam. Brought it down quite long here so that this is nice and flat here um, and at the end of the job we just cut it off um, with the me uh, multi-tool and uh, it won't harm the hull because there's a laminate behind it. So next, after this, I'll let that go off. Um, and then put a bit of foam on, cover over the top, not a problem anymore. Happy days! Lovely. Well, here we are. New week. I mean, I haven't stopped, but it's new week, so it's Monday. Um, new week, new material. Has arrived. Um, and I'm going to use it for the first time on this um, problem repair on the deck rail. Um, sheets of... I'm going to cut it and see how it cuts. Sheets of PVC foam for coring of the uh, sandwich laminates for the new deck house, but the the decks, the side decks, and the coach roof are foam core, um, and the deck rail, where we're replacing uh, the broken foam and the missing total deck rail. Um, I shall use some foam, and then it will be the first play that I have with it, which is, will be exciting, and it is sunny, and I'm happy. Ah, well, let's have a look at this. Uh, I cut a piece of foam with a bit of stand standing blade. It's like, um, it's like chewy, you know that stuff you put in the flowers, Oasis? It's like that, but chewy, not snappy. Uh, coated with um, a slurry, just a very loose, mix of epoxy with micro balloons to fill the surface um, of the foam and then continued thickening the 
epoxy to make a much more of a paste and I've laid a bed of paste um, along the edge quite thickly and this is the first piece of foam uh, to go onto the boat so I thought I'd record it even at risk of getting sticky and things and this going slightly wrong so I've only got one hand there you are we should have a sort of a tune or something da 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 Right. Okay. So the epoxy has grabbed that. It's quite nicely on there. I need to make a bit of a curve by putting a something against it, um, and then tidy this up along, and let that go off. It's a really, really warm day. Well, it's not really, really warm, but it's warm. It's about twelve o'clock. Hopefully, this will have uh, gone hard enough by you know, four or something uh, to be able to then sand the profile and then bring some epoxy over the top, some glass fibre over the top. Hmm, okay. Well, I've got the pot that I mixed up the filler with, with the micro balloons, the epoxy. It's, it's rubbery. I've read on the internet that it's not going to be ready, but here it is. Um, and it's quite thick, um, the filler. I've been warned that uh, thick epoxy filler underneath the foam can generate heat and the foam can insulate that heat and it could be dangerous. Um, seems to be okay. Um, but yeah, so I've read on the internet that um, that's going to take three days to go off, so I'll go and do something else. But I will uh, finish the repair underneath by playing, uh, applying the tapes back. We can have a look at that inside. Right. So I've got my tape. A four inch strip of uh, glass fiber. And then look what we're doing. So these are the tapes, you can see the repair going up over the top, and the deck is joined to the hull using these tapes here, which you've cut away to do the repair, so we'll just put these back in again, and underneath, very good, okay, it's done I think. Done. Good. Okay, three days later. Um, so it's all went hard. Um, and I've now sanded that off. Um, to give us the... Profile of the deck rail. Um, so I'll epoxy onto that with some glass. Um, Looks like maybe three bits, um, and uh, that'll be done. Chop it off when it's dry, cured. So there you are. Right, that's pretty reasonable. Uh, so gone over it. Three sheets of glass. So now we've got two underneath and one on top, and then three on top of that. So it's three millimetres thick at the edge here, which is about equivalent to what the deck was. Um, mm, very impressed with the workability of the foam, 
the glass went right onto it, I didn't want to not stick to it, it's fine, good. Good, I'll never lay down. I'm not. I've got more work to do. I could sleep for a hundred years, honestly. Right. Auxiliary position. Uh, number one, number two. Auxiliary position number two. Right. I've been investigating the fore deck. Um, this is the fore hatch. Um, and I'm very, very, I'm very relieved actually. Um, so let's have a look at what I've discovered. And we'll have a look at what the difference is between things that have existed always on the boat since she was built <coughs> and uh, things that have not always existed. Uh, so, we'll start with this, which I don't think has always existed. It's heavy. Uh, that's heavy. Ah, heavy. Um, an anchor windlass was uh, here. It was there. Um, it's stuck on some silicon. Um, I'm thinking twice about this, this the surface that we took off. Um, I don't know really. Yeah, look at this. this bit. So we took off the paint, and you can see that the paint that we took off um, is running underneath where this was sat on. Because the edge of it is chipped here where I've chipped it off. Um, and then you can see, because this is. I can't believe that's not the actual gel coat that was original. It occurs to me that this surface may be, um, may have been moulded on and it's just failed. I mean, two minds about it really. Um, but I think that has been sat on the coatings that have been put on the deck, should we say that? Because it's a mess underneath. And if we contrast that with the... Uh, Tabernacle, which is what the, uh, where the mast sits in. Well, I've taken that off. And underneath that, we'll look quite closely. This is some kind of a metallic um, a sort of metallic. But it's, it occurs to me that this is a register surface. This is very, very flat. Um, it's, it's not been lashed on by somebody in a DIY fashion. This is, I think, original. So that's very, very good news that this hasn't been messed about with. Um, it's just got a cork gasket. Um, cork gaskets, metal onto the register surface. So that's. So I can just put that back on with a new gasket, just put it back on again. Uh, and if that is not original, it leads me to the question of the bow roller. So let's have a look at that. I try not to come a cropper. Very good. Um, right, let's have a look at it. <coughs> now, Similar to the to where the chain goes for the anchor, uh, the chain pipe. Um, similar patina and material to the chain pipe is the bow roller. Um, these fixings inside cannot be seen. These four at the back, the screws are all aligned um, which a craftsman might do when they're applying screws into identical holes and to get them to line up again it's not a DIY thing you see it on the um, chain pipe as well the alignment of the screw heads 
is all identical. And this is the way that craftsmen build things. Uh, the front four can be seen from underneath and are held underneath with nuts. There's a, a, a wooden, I think, what I'm getting at here is that these brass, bronze fitting with brass screws, I think, um, these are not removable without completely ruining them. And if these were factory fitted into the supporting um, uh, member beneath, then there's a, it's absolutely ridiculous to pull it off now. It's done 50 years. Um, and I think it's even you can see that the, it's a little bit bent. It's slightly lifted at the front edge from where it's been tugged on. So we'll just explain the fitting while we're looking at it. Is this is the very, very, very front of the boat. This is the rigging attachment point for the force day as it comes down. And then it's asymmetric. So this is the centre and the, there's a bow roller cast into the one side of it, the roller. The roller's not terribly good, but uh, it will take the, the anchor chain, which was running around the windlass um, and into the chain pipe. Um, it's fashionable or desirable, I'm not sure which, because I'm not a sailor at the moment, um, to uh, to use a spinnaker. Um, and a spinnaker is held on a little, so it would seem, I mean, this is what people have on their boats, right? On tiny little bow sprits, maybe about that long, longer than this one piece that's so sticking around about there so we can get it on one side so we've got the bow roller on one side the bow sprit on the other side and that then comes back to about there and be held on perhaps um, the windlass uh, very heavy um, people don't normally have windlasses on little tiny boats like this um, and I have to say that is a monstrous inconvenience to have a great set of fixings, as has been the case. Um, underneath here, have a look. Is here, which is, it's in the, it's in the head zone when you're laying down and you have your head rested on that little, um, step that separates the chain locker from the uh, four peak bunk is these fixes right by the head and I, I've hit my head on that more times than I can tell anybody honestly um, so to have that back on there I wouldn't be surprised if that goes on eBay honestly because um, one can see the anchor you know I started stood in the hatch and this is I think probably the sensible way of handling the anchor is it's down in the hatch. Haul it over the... Because um, if one can haul the anchor, it's much quicker to haul it than it is to wind it round a thing. Wish I could see how strong I'm feeling, generally. Which is pretty strong, actually, so... Um, yeah, I might not put it back on, but there you are. So, um, we'll just have one... There's a clip from a little bit earlier um, of me attacking the uh, deck rail and to saw, with a hand saw, um, V notches either side of the fixing points. Um, and then uh, using, uh, knocking it out, the V part, knocking it out with a, um, hammer and a screwdriver um, and then cutting the top off the fixing with a dremel uh, leaving that sticking outside and you can then just pull the uh, the deck rail off and the fixings we'll have a look in here 
Uh, so there are two um, levels of fixings. The higher level fixings are the deck joint, um, and the lower level fixings, so we'll maybe pop outside again, the lower level fixings are for the rail. So we've taken, using the Dremel, because they're lumps, we'll have a look under the side, so I've just Dremeled into there, so they will just, we'll have a look at how they are before you cut them, because I've only just done one side. Um, they're these lumps, I'm just using the Dremel. Excellent, excellent tool um, is the thing I've got in the end of the Dremel um, that we've seen before, P shaped thing, but it's a whole set. And these are diamond rasps, I think they're called. Um, and they've been incredibly useful. They don't seem to blunt at all. Um, and they just eat the fiberglass brilliantly. You can do edges, because they come with flat ones. You can see, flat one will do edges. Um, these sharp ones dig out holes excellently. You can undercut with the P-shaped one. Really top tool. So my, right at the top of the list of the best tools that I've been using. I mean, the most useful. Uh, good. I know that it was the thing that when you make a list, you do the list and you think you've finished. Um, but of course, you only finish the things that are on the list. And the things that never got onto the list in the first place, like all this other stuff that I've just been doing for like a couple of weeks, just wasn't stuff that I thought had needed to be looked at. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I've got some more time now, so we're going to proceed in a diligent fashion um, and as soon as possible. Good. Where I was using the heat gun some parts of the boat, three parts of the boat, just in small areas like this, became quite squashy. That is hard again up there. No, no, that is soft. That's hard. Yes. Okay, well, I, I can see where this is now. Um, you can see the line where the saddle of the boat is, you can see it running through here and this is the end part of it and what I've just seen on the other side this is a bit conjectural it's like I might be making it up but it seems to make sense to me um, is in cleaning the um, a couple of radio connections uh, that used to come through the deck and fixing those then this is other very perfectly round a grey, um, clearly a filled hole there. So I've just made some investigations and it <coughs> it doesn't become filler, it's not at all loose, it was very perfectly finished. Um, so, this is quite hard this side. Um, I think it may be filled from above, formed underneath with fiberglass and made hollow and then drilled from above and filled with some kind of a putty or something, resin. Um, and here there's an air bubble. It goes back to hard. But considering what this is, I shall have to think rather carefully about what to do with it because I don't want to destroy the integrity of this structure as it comes through and wraps around and comes over the top. I think we probably best be better to I say it goes back to being stiff again. I think there's an air bubble under here. The hot air makes the hot air expand that makes the air expand and softens the fiberglass so it becomes a bit bubbly. Um, but it goes back to hard. I think some fiberglass over the top and keep an eye on it. I don't you know, you could grind. No, I don't want to grind into it. It's rather like the the bow roller. I think some things are actually best left. I think this is just reacting to the heat as part of the fact of the way that it's been done. 
and there's a bit of a void under. And there's probably an argument that says we could inject some epoxy into there to harden it up underneath, and I think that's probably a good idea. Um, but in terms of removing a load of material, it's not going to happen. So we'll inject it, piece over, and keep an eye on it. Um, that's all we can do. I don't think it's super critical. This is doing most of the work. It's all tied together, but um, yeah, I'm really getting there now, actually. Quality, excellent, good. Okay, I'm really running out of things to, uh, to fix now. Um, so let's have a look at uh, one of the remaining items and start talking about um, the side deck. And I'll jump up. Um, so the, the side deck is the, is the ideal uh, transit way um, to get from one end of the boat to the other. So, over right here, walk down the, the side deck, rather than walking over the coach roof, clearly. So what they used to be uh, was a rail at the edge of the side deck. It's very common on a yacht, but because this is such a small one, um, is it becomes very very narrow indeed if you have to walk inside and you trip over your own foot as it comes through um, not ideal at all you've got no rail there you can use um, your balance much more easily than you can if you're walking a plank right so good those are gone um, so let's talk about um, what one would normally have is a lifeline um, on a boat, uh, a wire that runs, or a tape uh, that runs fore and aft, and is generally on the side deck. I don't understand this. I do not understand. So if you're traversing the boat, you've got a harness, and you're clipped to something that's at your feet. So if you fall, you have to fall the equivalent length off the side of the boat before the um, lifeline catches you. So you're in the water already. This is daft, surely. Probably good. Um, it would be much more sensible if one were clipped above oneself so if you did fall you'd be caught almost immediately by a lifeline if it was you know even at waist height so what we're looking at actually here are these handrails um, I'm a bit of a preservationist I really quite like wood um, they would, I think, clean up very nicely. Um, and oil, and they'd be very nice, but, um, and um, these being screwed onto the coach roof stiffens the coach roof. So they're good, but uh, uh, they're rather loose. Um, they're rather cracked the other one is much more cracked even than this one um, and to take it off and bed it and fix it properly um, one would have to take out these I can't get a socket on there I want a bit more work to get it out could be done but right so if we walk down the deck the handrail is asking us to walk down the deck like this in this crouched position. Um, the position that you're clipped with a light, uh, with a harness is generally from your waist, I'd say, isn't it? Um, so your waist is that much further away from the boat 
um, than it would be if there was a line up here. So it is my proposition that moving down the side of the boat should be done without lifelines. Bloody hell, I'm going to fall off <laughs> in lifeline. And the lifeline should really be up here. So then if one's on the side deck, you can clip and hold on to that clip as it runs and be quite upright as one walks along. And this is going to feed into something that I'm going to do with the tabernacle, actually. Um, but it just makes it makes this redundant having this down here. And if, say, we're sitting on the edge of the deck, oh, ow, I just hurt my arse on it. Um, you hurt your arse on it because it sticks up further than you're sitting on it. It's uncomfortable. I want to sit here. This is a nice place to sit. Creaming along, six knots, feet over the edge, sunny day, very nice. I want to sit here. So, um, I'm going to take them off. Um, they are serving some function, they could be beautiful, um, and they are an original part of the boat. Um, but I can't get um, what we really want on this coach roof is for holes like this to be filled, reinforced over the top, um, and for paint to completely cover in a beautiful coat all of the deck so that no water can penetrate through and it's easy to clean and all of these things. And you see, having these rails on at the moment, I can't even get to the old paint to get it off. If I did, and then repainted it, there'd be a gap between the paint and the top surface of this, and the top surface of this, this is loose. Um, water can easily penetrate there to some old, old holes that go through. It's just not a, to finish it, um, is an enormous work and I don't think to, it's realistic to get these off in one piece. It's just going to be so hard uh, given my experience with taking brass fixings out. So I'm going to take them off. I have misgivings about it. Absolutely I do. Um, I'm very nearly at the end of... I keep saying that. And then find loads more stuff to do. Anyway, right. Uh, so I'll take those off. Bit sad. I'm sad. I am sad about it. Um, but I will. Okay? going to do it. Sorry. Maybe. Right. Uh, well, I got it off. Um, used the Dremel to uh, split the nuts. Um, and actually, on reflection, the condition of the wood is just, is not great. It has lost its uh, mojo. It's, it's friable, uh, crumbly to a certain extent. Oh, it's not totally crumbly, but it snapped comprehensively um, and quite easily whilst I was taking it off. So I'm glad it's off because if it were to snap comprehensively whilst one was using it uh, at sea, it could uh, present a uh, risk to danger, a hazard, um, all those things. Um, I'm sad though. Um, but I think it will give us an opportunity actually, because we've got these bits on the roof now. Um, this is quite a good place for a fender actually, um, to have it sort of permanently rigged, maybe the cleat or something in the middle to extend the length. Um, but this is to this side of the porthole, um, equivalently to this side of the porthole, reasonably at the middle of the boat, uh, because the, what I have found with Arwen is that a lot of dock sides, key sides, um, marina berths, um, the edges of rivers and things um, are actually built rather higher than the, uh, than the deck rail. Um, so she tends to slip underneath things um, and actually catch what would be against the hull on the side of the coach roof. So fenders are m more often than not needed 
actually to defend the uh, coach roof. Uh, so to have them at the top and to be able to extend down and to be able to extend down further, I think it's quite clever. Uh, so maybe do that. No more wood. Sad. Well, the breeze uh, seems to have decided for me, it's how I thought about today, is today is the end of the chrysalis. My little tented over enclosure that's got me through uh, since Christmas. It's a warm and sunny day, and we're due a, a week of warm and sunny days. Um, as we come towards the beginning of May and I'm coming to the end, the true end but all the way back over the top of the deck so I've just got the rub rail to move, uh, remove so there'll be nothing to hold up my tent frame anymore but then I won't need it because I uh, would have done the majority of the work that's required and certainly the work that's required to be done in unpleasant weather uh, Good I'll make to that and then we can have a look at it and go yay. Ah, well. Uh, surprise! I didn't want a surprise. Well, I've got a surprise. Good. Um, this. I. All along the edge, and we've looked at this. The deck comes over the top of the hull and is joined together. Now let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at this in more detail. But um, the rub rail is covering this edge. This is the top of the hull and the deck is jointed next to it. I was not expecting that at all. Um, so I'll have to come up with some rules or others to get over that so we don't get a water ingress there. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, surprises are surprises. And uh, we some of it stop us. Finishing off, eh? Because um, I've got to, I've got, I've got to, I've got to clear off this place and get going and get ready, uh, because the boys are in town this evening in Didcot, of all places. I don't know why they don't come to Oxford. I'm going to go see Skelly Bull. Scary Bum. Right, I'm going. I'm going. Out of the splits, but it's only a thin disguise.